So I went on board uh, the Midsummer Farm with the Muscomals Awadena when they went to perform ceremony to get rid of this industry. I had 10 minutes to stick my camera under the water and look at these fish. And this is what I saw. I was stunned. I saw a fish go by with a big tumor on his head. This is one fish out of sort of like 800,000 that are in this pen. How many others have this? We've gotten a lot of reports of the people in the processing plants cutting these tumors off. I mean, they even talk about having tumor fights. Are they going to sell that for people to eat or is that dog food? I, I, yeah, I would worry about that. I was surprised at the number of fish that were behaving sickly. They were so sluggish. They were lying against the camera, lying against the side of the net. And um, one of the viruses I'm studying, Piscine Riovirus, is associated with a disease called heart and skeleton muscle inflammation. It actually damages the salmon's heart so that they become so weak they can barely move. And in the scientific literature, it says that the fish line up uh, on the net with their faces towards the net. And that's what they were doing in every single pen. There were fish that were so emaciated, they no longer looked like salmon. They were, you know, big heads, tiny skinny bodies. Again, this is one of the symptoms of uh, heart and skeletal muscle inflammation, very contagious disease. That is classic HSMI. You see his head is bigger than the rest of his body. This is what the literature says a fish with heart and skeletal muscle inflammation looks like. Weak, skinny, that's a sick fish. You know, what is wrong with it? Is that contagious to the wild fish just outside the pen? Here's a fish floating upside, dying. I mean, you never see this in the wild. In the wild, this would be immediately eaten by a predator. So whatever he's dying of, that, that, those viruses and bacteria are pouring out of that fish through the nets into the ocean, putting all our wild salmon at risk. And here, this is the first hard evidence ever. These are wild fish in the pen. They're nearly transparent. Uh, they're about this long. And the Atlantic salmon, you can see them swimming underneath. They're much bigger. And there they are striking at them. They are actually feeding on these fish. Look at that, whoa, yeah. So wild fish uh, are being used by these Norwegian corporations to actually grow their fish. Those could be herring or they could be ulican. This is the first hard evidence after 30 years of people saying, oh, there's wild fish in the pens, accusing the industry of their fish feeding on these wild fish, which means um, they're growing their fish at the expense of the wild fisheries. The industry was always like, no, no, you know, our fish only eat pellets. Well, clearly not, because here are the fish eating these wild fish. I saw all this in 10 minutes. It's pretty shocking. Imagine what is going on on the rest of this coast. There are a lot of sick fish. There's a lot of disease floating out of these pens, and there's a lot of wild fish that are clearly being eaten to the benefit of foreign shareholders. While our own fishermen are being boarded by DFO for having a couple of extra wild fish on board. I'm not saying that's a good thing that they have bycatch on their boat, but what about this? You know, DFO is, is completely willfully blind to this industry. And to me, that really just smacks of corruption and fraud. Why, why, why isn't DFO checking this industry? Why are they allowed to eat wild fish? This is illegal bycatch. It's unregulated. Nobody's there counting these fish. Nobody saw what I saw. And I have no reason to believe this is not happening in every pen uh, along this coast. What we're looking at here is herring that are actually feeding on the feed that's coming out of the pens. So uh, the farmers spray pellets into the pens and some of it is crumbled in dust and it's flowing out of the pen. And you can see how the herring suddenly go in towards the net. Um, they're eating that stuff. This, to, to me, from a biological point of view, is one of the most dangerous things I've seen on this whole trip because these fish are eating, first of all, unnatural food. i got to wonder if their flesh is pink because, you know, the farm salmon pellets have a, a colorant in them. So when they medicate their feed to get rid of sea lice and, and they put the drugs in there or whatever other drugs are in there, antibiotics, so that means those herring are eating it. So what if those herring do grow up and somebody's eating them? You know, that means the seals are eating them, the birds are eating them. They're being bathed in viruses that are coming out of this farm and sea lice and bacteria. But, I mean, this is a place where the herring have been crashed and, and depressed for 30 years. Nobody's fishing them. 
the fish are still here, the beaches are still here, but they're unable to rebuild their numbers. And uh, when I see a dynamic like this, th this is very serious, yeah, very serious. This industry's way out of line. Um, and I think that people will be shocked at what will happen when this industry gets out of the water. I think there'll be a rebound in wild salmon and herring. It will stun people.